Uh, let's talk to Ruby in Germany. Ruby, you're live with Eric and V. What would you like to talk about? Hello. Oh my God. Hi. I can't believe you got my call. Hello, <laughs> Big Gates. Hello. I think there's a slight delay. Yeah. If you're watching the show, there's a pretty big delay, actually. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm uh, I'm also hearing you guys. I'm, I'm watching it, but uh, without the sound. So, um, yeah, I'd like to talk about the perception of hijab in the Western countries. Okay. Yeah. 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 What would you like to talk about? Yep. Uh, I'd like to talk about the perception of hijab in Western countries. I'm originally from Turkey. I came to Germany about two years ago. And... Um, the way I've seen here, the hijab has kind of seemed like a freedom symbol for women. I'm I'm quite confused about that, and I'm really interested. How do you see hijab in in USA? Because I see so many positive propaganda uh, for hijab in Western countries, and I seriously don't understand this uh, as a person. Uh, who fought for women's uh, right to not wear hijab. And especially, I really don't think a woman from Iran or something uh, like a sort of a country, which I know a lot of uh, women from Iran, they come to Turkey to be more free. Um, they wouldn't see this as a freedom symbol. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm curious what you think about this. Sure. Yeah. Um, for me, I think that there's a there's a, a crucial element to acknowledge here, which is just the difference in how we see religions when they're the majority or when they're uh, a minority, however, however much smaller than in the majority religion. Right. And so for let's let's use Christianity as an example. For me, I grew up in a household that told me never to cut my hair. I was told by my opa that a woman's hair was her glory and it was how you knew that she was a good woman and men only liked women with long hair and all of none of those things are applicable anymore none no, of them not a single one not a single part of that is a wow all right sorry i, I had a i had a moment there um <laughs> i cut my hair once i got out of that house i was like i'm i'm, I'm done i want to cut my hair I, I i like the way it looks it's freer it's easier all of that for somebody who didn't grow up like me maybe there would be a, a difference in how they perceived it right they may not understand that for me long hair was oppressive and cutting my hair short was uh, an act of liberation now, I certainly am not going to go around saying that only women with short hair are free, right? Only people who, who don't grow their hair out uh, really have freedom and that people with long hair are oppressed, right? Um, but I am going to champion the ability for every person to be able to cut their hair if they so choose, if it makes them feel good. And so if more people cut their hair short and I'm noticing a connection between, hey, more the more uh, emotionally and mentally free a person is, the the more likely they are to go against a cultural standard and do something that might be considered drastic, like cut all your hair off. Um, but that's just because I grew up in a situation where short hair was considered uh, a bad thing. So I'm not sure if that answers your question exactly, um, but I can see parallel there. Yeah, I... I, I definitely have, uh, have something that runs parallel to that as well. And uh, that is, uh, in the town where I grew up, it was vast majority Latino. And um, you had a lot of kids whose parents, it was an agricultural community, and you had a lot of kids whose parents um, were either just immigrated or, or were actually migrant who would, who would come in and, uh, and work the fields when it was time. And um, these kids would go to my high school. And a lot of these kids, it, it, it's tough. It's really tough when, when your parents say you can't speak Spanish in our household because you need to learn to speak English. And so they wind up losing their language and can no longer communicate with their parents. You have a lot of kids who, um, so in, in my situation, um, I just wanted to feel like I was connecting to a heritage that I didn't have a lot of connection to. 
And um, you have a lot of parents who would push for integration to the point where there was a, a, a pushback against the culture you came from. And I know that that's true for a lot of cultures. And so what you wind up having is a lot of second and third generation kids growing up very, very patriotic and very much embracing the symbols of the culture that their their heritage comes from. Um, and it's it's just, it, it's kind of that wanting to take... Helped her. I'm sorry? Uh, that is literally uh, how Turkish people who were born here, uh, mm-hmm. like the second generation Turkish people... Germany are like this. They're extremely patriotic. They're more yep. religious than the. It's uh... yeah, it's <laughs> connecting with your culture, and and if you don't have that experience yeah. to tie to it, obviously it's not going to you know, especially in the face of bigotry, in the face of bigotry. I never wanted to embrace my Latino heritage as much as when I got beat up by a neo-Nazi. Like, I was like, fuck you, I'm getting way into this. Um, and so when, in the face of a lot of anti, anti-Muslim anti bigotry, um, which is different than, I, I, I'm, I'm drawing a line, we can talk about the, the, the nuances later. Yeah. Um, if you hate somebody because they're wearing a hijab, they're more likely to wear that damn hijab. And um, in, in the face of bigotry in Western countries, um, I could absolutely imagine that spurring people on to do it, it just means a totally different thing to them. Yeah, most likely. Um, yeah, I understand that uh, point. Um, I really see hijab as like um, some sort of a, a non, not freedom symbol. I'm sorry, I can't uh, remember the word right now. But uh, for me, it's totally a suppressive thing. And here, when I see women, like, because I, I had so many friends back in Turkey that had to wear hijab because of their parents. And some of them, they were like, they, they, I also watched this video from um, um, ex-Muslims of North America, I think, oh, yeah. about mm-hmm. illusion of choice. Yeah. And this is most women, how, how do they think that they're like, Okay, I choose this myself, but actually they they don't have actually any other choice to do do otherwise. And right. I find this extremely sad and I just don't like it don't, don't can, cannot comprehend how can people su- uh, support this and show it as a freedom symbol especially. Well, I I, I um, think the I think what you can do is share your experience. The more education that people get on these things, the, the more likely they are to, to reevaluate their views. Um, but you do need to have room for people to embrace their culture. We need to find something to maybe replace that with. Mm. You know, there are yeah, lots of amazing cultural... Yeah, there are lots of amazing cultural things that you can embrace that don't have to be a job. Um, but until we embrace those things... Yeah. People are going to reach for what they can that that makes them feel, you know, hey, I'm unique. I'm an individual, and this is something that I that that I'm not going to sit back and and listen to bigotry about my heritage. I'm going to embrace it, and I I absolutely see that. And for and yeah. just 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 so that I can future proof myself for people in the comments, that doesn't mean that I'm holding people who who believe in Islam, you know, aside. No, if if you've got magical claims, you gotta you gotta speak to those magical claims, and and you should you should have back them up, or it's silly. And I, but that aside, we're talking about it's it's the same way we talk about Israel. You know, there are a people, and then there are there is a religion, and the people themselves um, are, are what I'm talking about here. So, but you're also, I think you're right, Ruby, in that there is a layer of nuance here that doesn't get talked about when you're talking about the socio political element, which is the thing that we talk about on this show, which is that illusion of choice and the indoctrination portion, right? You can think that you are choosing something of your own free will and not be doing that. You can think that you are living bravely in God and actually be very, very afraid and not realize that you are living in fear until you come out of that religion. So there is also that element to take into consideration, which I think you've done very nicely in in describing, which is, yes, we can talk about the cultural implications of it, 
But there's also this other conversation to be had, which is you might think that this person is freely choosing this, but if her community is going to kick her out for not choosing this, or if she thinks that God will be mad at her for not choosing this, then it's not really a free choice or, or a liberated thing at all. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's that's true. Like, um, just about uh, like I I am an atheist for a very very long time. I my parents are atheists, although my family is quite religious. But um, in Turkey, like early two thousands, about like I think two thousand eight or two thousand ten is about like when I realized I'm an atheist. We would keep it hush hush, mm-hmm. so we wouldn't, you know excommunicated from our friends from our like relatives and um i can understand that totally so yeah i mean i just uh, think that uh, i i didn't see this thing a uh, topic talked about uh, in this program i've been following you guys for a year and i just wanted nice. to um shed a light on it a little because i think this should be talked about it's an incredibly important topic, and I'm really glad that you called about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, th- thanks for taking my call. Of course. Absolutely. Thank you so much for calling. Your Take care. I liked that call. Yeah, and, and, and there there is a reason that certain conversations aren't had as often. We, we love talking with people of any, of any faith from any culture on the show, but be, I know for me at least, because I am, I wasn't raised in, in a Muslim religion or anything except for a very fundamentalist evangelical Christianity, that's the kind of conversation I'm most comfortable having. That's the kind of conversation where I know enough to be able to come at somebody and say, well, what about this, 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 and this, right? And, yeah. and hold people's feet to the fire. Um, and, I, and I'm and i happy to learn, and I love learning, but... If, if I didn't have that experience with Heritage, I wouldn't have been able to dive into that, but I'm yeah. glad I could, because, yeah, that is... Everybody I talk to has 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 kind of propped that up as, as a thing that they've seen. I, I know it's anecdotal, but it's just, it's funny in my life. I've seen that experience a lot. Also, follow Rupi's example. If there is an episode, if there is something that we don't talk about enough on the show or something that you want to see talked about, call mm-hmm. in, talk to us about it. We're, right. we're here, we're open. 